<clears throat> Welcome everyone to another joint final cut. I guess that's what you can call it a final cut joint venture. Uh, <laughs> we are here tonight with uh, Kitty Glidewell, the bald in front artist, formerly known as the blonde in front, once again, to talk about a horror movie this year's buzz horror film like last year i think was skin mark before that it was terrifier there always seems to be like this one indie horror film that suddenly catches the culture winnie the pooh you know the 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 the, the, the pooh the winnie pooh blood and honey was a uh, one as well that just seems to catch the buzz and the social media and it actually ends up getting a wide release film and so we're talking about in a violent nature tonight. Katie, thank you for joining me about this. You are very welcome. I'm so looking forward to discussing this with you. And I think you meant Skinamarink instead oh, skin, of Skinamark. Skinamark. So I, I call it sounds like something that's in like your underwear. Like if you don't, you know, how to go to the, it's like, <laughs> honey, you honey. know what? That's kind of how I felt about the movie, honestly. I felt <laughs> like it's like, did I just get skin skin marked? What happened here? <laughs> I need some extra bleach today. No, um, but <laughs> skin, yeah, skin whatever it was called. I always saw it and just my brain automatically filled in like skin mark, maybe because you had the M and the K in there, and you know, I don't know. But in any case, you know it, you follow films, you're a critics critic, Katie, and you uh, you know, critics I know follow you, and you know. There does, it seems like it, right? We get like every year, like one indie film, because you and I have watched indie horror quite a bit. Uh, but it I've always been just seems in like indie horror. Mark. And you've Don't been, that. yes. Oh, Please. I haven't forgotten. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Actually, we've both been in indie horror as well. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, uh, uh, we're twinsies. Uh, but uh, doesn't it seem like, like just one? For some reason, there's just that one indie film every year that catches some distributor's eye that actually gets it in the theaters and suddenly in front of social media. Like, there's plenty of these types of films out there, but it's just usually it seems it's weird how it's just one that catches on. And this time it's, you know, in a violent nature. Yes, I would say. Uh, I mean, Late Night with the Devil, I think, has had a lot of that yeah. too this mm -hmm. year. Uh, but in a violent nature, definitely, I would say right now, but uh, I don't know. There's just, I would, I would say it's the most divisive horror film of the <laughs> year so far. I mean, there are people who are getting in a violent nature discussing <laughs> this film about how much, how their hatred just grows for it. And I mean, I know a number of people who... I mean, I appreciate it for what it's trying to do. There's a number of aspects of the film that I enjoy. Is it going to be my top 10? I don't know. Maybe 10, possibly. I mean, it's still June. I'm hoping there's going to be, believe me, we, you know, we're going to get like 1,800 films in October because don't spread them out, people. Just give them all to us like in one month because that's the way to do it. Um but I like, you know, the different feel that they were doing with this, with an indie, you know, slasher in the woods horror film. Uh, there are many people who disagree with me. <laughs> uh, some have, some I personally know who said this is the worst film they've ever seen in their entire life. You've actually named some worst films, like, and it's like, <laughs> um, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Ooh. is far worse than this i mean oh. come on guys i understand you can have emotions and stuff and uh, we all have those but come on this is this film is no. much this is by no means the worst film i understand people are mad because of the walking and stuff but when i've described it i've just described it as jaws in the water Instead of Jaws from the beach, looking at the shark, we're looking at it from the shark's side. It's like the shark's just freaking swimming. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's clever the way they've done some of those things with the walking to show how much time has passed. Like, we don't need to show the, Johnny, our killer, walking for like 10 hours. But you definitely get that with some of the aspects that they use. Like, you know, with lighting, but also, you know, maybe headphones that you can tell that the battery's dying. 
I've been there. I know you've been there, Mark, from the 80s. You know what that's like, and you know how long that takes. And I thought, you know, there's clever aspects about it. But, yeah, I there definitely is usually, like, I would say maybe th three horror films um, throughout the year that really fair, have yeah. that huge buzz. And especially, I think this one, since it came out, like, at... I think it was at Sundance maybe mm -hmm. and like South by Southwest. So then it had the buzz going there. Right. You know, I saw it at the Chicago um, Critics Film Festival and then it, um, you know, has its theater run. And I know, I think right now it's like got 3.8 million that it's made in the theater in the past, I think two weeks, which yeah. considering I think it was under 300,000. I don't even know how much. <laughs> I definitely know it can't be more than that. Like honestly, if they did spend more than that, then then I'll be mad. That will be my <laughs> anger. That will be I will give them the violent nature for that. Cause uh, it's like, come on now. No. But I mean, I've got my little, you know, this is oh yeah. This looks like gold. It does. That's one of my favorite lines from the film because it's just so stupid. Wow, is that <laughs> real? That looks like real gold, you guys. Like it's 2024. Come on, go to Pose. <laughs> Go to K's, go to a gas station, get a better jewelry. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, really? But it's like, but I love it. I think it was so funny. And anytime anyone that I know doesn't like the film, I always do, do that. It's like, yeah, but you guys, that was real gold. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, there's a lot of aspects to this film that are interesting and interesting choices uh i was trying to see if i could find real quick the budget uh i've just found what it's made so far which is three you're right 3.6 million which is which is crazy and that's uh, but then it came out may 31st in theaters yeah. so yeah. that's pretty damn good for a week's time for this this low budget of horror like honestly that's really good well, and and 1400 theaters overall uh is is crazy you know that it's made that much um and i think yeah i think the budget for it was like only three hundred thousand. you know most of that probably went to the gore effects because yeah folks if you haven't heard of what a vi in a violent nature is it is uh it is basically a slasher movie but it's told from the perspective of the slasher which is something we i mean we've kind of gotten before with horror films occasionally, but usually it's just like a scene or two, like, you know, in Hellraiser, we did get the perspective of, uh, of pinhead for one of the scenes where we see him picking through the pieces and reassembling a face from skin pieces. You know, I mean, so we get to see that, but for a slasher, especially a shape slasher, because uh, this pretty much is, if you haven't caught the Friday the Thirteenth influence on this film, you're you you haven't watched enough horror films because <laughs> this guy is pretty much you know uh, Jason and everything but name in many ways, especially the walk. It was funny they even mimicked the Jason walk. I'm like, wow, okay, guys. Um, but I appreciate it. As, uh, I'm gonna say that. There's a number of decisions in this film that I think take away from what they were kind, trying to go for. Uh, like you said, you know, kind of the gold. Oh, is that real gold? I'm like, hey, guys, just, yeah, right. Uh, you know, and there's a few other things that we'll, we'll touch on that they did that I wish they had done differently and they had the opportunity to. And in doing so, I'm like, okay, that kind of, diminishes what you're doing uh in this but overall i was entertained i think and i think you'll agree with me i think the star of this film is no one in front of the camera yeah. not a single person the star of this film is the sound engineer yes. for this movie oh I, would, I would say the sound engineer and the practical effects master yes i mean if if Anyone who is watching has not heard about the fact that it's, you know, from Gory, the POV. Yeah. It's like the side. It's like, you know, the back POV. You're not seeing it from <laughs> the killer's eyes. You're right. seeing it from, um, we're seeing it from the back of his head. But it's like walk, walk, walk. So 
it's like you yes it has that friday the 13th jason just because it's in the woods kind of thing it's not necessarily jason it's kind of jason um adjacent uh, <laughs> jason no. yeah part six but i mean yeah jason adjacent um, but then you also kind of have like, you know, a Halloween Michael Myers kind of thing. Cause you see like the walk, 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 the methodical walking, just like, why is everyone running? But he's walking and then, and, you know, just seeing him go along, but it's very much, I immediately got this ass, um, the video game aspect. Oh, yeah. it's like when mm-hmm. you watch any of the Friday the 13th video games, the way the character walks and stuff like that. And I mean, sometimes they find the campers, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the campers, you know, don't see Jason for like 10 minutes and maybe it's like, and that can kind of, you know, have some suspense, but also I know a lot of people that didn't like that. And it's like, I understand that you're watching a guy walk, but it's like, this is kind of how boring his life is. It's like, you're not seeing it from, and I can't say that they're teenagers. You can't see it. You're not seeing it from like the young adult aspect um, and all that. And um, probably not bad because, you know, the young adults in this film are kind of assholes. Uh, they are. They are. There's, yeah, yeah. But you, which you know. most um, young adults or teenagers in horror films are. And in fact, most teenagers in um real life uh, <laughs> young adults in any genre are like yeah. if you take a look at most of film most films usually the teenagers the young adults are the ones who um start the fuck up and yeah. then that's yeah that's what um that's what ends up you end up having to fix it because of them so mm-hmm. yeah genre trope or not yeah kids suck uh but um <laughs> This coming from you know obviously i do not have kids <laughs> all my many amazing things in my abode you yeah, know you're able to have so many amazing things yeah you know, I, I have two exactly. kids and and i've met i've met some uh young younger folks who act like that i've seen it luckily uh my boys and that's not just a father saying i will say that my boys uh never really took that extreme attitude that you see some teenagers take or you know young folks take especially like in this film uh but i've seen it i've seen it firsthand many times at gatherings and parents and that so you know it, it's not far from from that but i think you hit on something and it's something that and, and i apologize to my watchers if I'm, I'm beating a dead horse i do repeat myself occasionally on uh, cross shows but horror is made for the young demograph it is it is not made for uh, the new horror horror films should be made for the young mm-hmm. 20s the late teenagers and as you said uh, you hit on it there is a video game aspect to this film to where you know we have a generation my my kids who are college kids of that there, there's a whole generation who find entertainment in watching other people play games they they literally you can stream gaming and people will tune in and watch other people play games so this isn't that far removed from something like that to where you're literally watching you know a live action (laughs) game of sorts and while that might not appeal to the gen xers and the gen zers who grew up on 80s and, and 90s horror there is an appeal for the younger folks with a film like this uh, that one, they're going to get grossed out with the gore. I mean, that's what the terrifier is. I mean, terrifier, more people will talk about the character of art, the clown and the gory scenes than the actual story. So, you know, and so in this one too, I've seen a couple reviews. Someone said this film grossed me out and I loved it. Um, because, uh, the director here who, uh, worked on this worked on one of my favorite indie uh, homage films. He was the spe- the, the practical effects uh, department for Psycho Gorman, which is oh, a- okay. Chris Nash. Mm-hmm. I looked up his cred- credentials, and while he hasn't directed much as far as films, he was involved in the the practical effects department and gore effects for Psycho Gorman, which explains a lot with the kills that we get in here, um, because. Uh, I love the kills in here. Uh, I, I think they're fun. There's a wonderful one with a hook and uh, pulling a head through. 
<laughs> that has been wildly known as the yoga kill. That the is yoga going kill. around. So you don't know, but you know what we're talking about. The, the yoga the, kill. There's the yoga kill, which I really enjoyed. I, I enjoyed a couple of the more, you know, straightforward ones. Um, and, I, and Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I, no, no, no. I was just going to say, and, and, you know, I get the walking part. But it, I listen. I watched this. Uh, I happened to get a screener, so I have I, I watched it with my headphones on, and the sound makes this movie. I don't think if the sound engineers, the Foley guys in that, did as good a job as they did, no, I wouldn't have found this as interesting. But their audio was crisp and so spot on when he's walking through the woods. I felt like I was in the woods. It, it was like that good. And with that, that helps win over and make the walking at least somewhat more interesting. <laughs> well, and for me, you know, like I said, there is a kill where a guy is wearing uh, headphones. headphones. Yeah. You know, it is set in modern times and stuff. And they even make fun of them. It's like, oh, are you going to be the old man with the headphones? And like yeah. all those girls will be like, ooh, grandpa, what is that? Um, and it's like, ha, 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 that's really funny. But when he gets killed, Johnny the killer, um, that is like, you know, a re, uh, you know, reawakened zombie because someone took the mom's necklace that keeps him at bay, you know, under the yeah. ground. Um, when Johnny kills this person, he takes the body and he takes the head and, you know, he walks, he walks away from where he killed um, them, which is at where the, um, you know, the whole is, yeah. Group, yeah, whole group of people are um, that we get to meet. And he's like dragging them along. And it's like, you hear the music in uh, the headphones. And then like a second later, it's like slowing down. It's like, Oh, this guy's been walking a while. Like this, it's like those headphones, you know, it takes like four or five hours before that yeah. battery dies. And I thought that was really clever. And also, like as you were talking about with um with the woods, it's like to hear like the leaves rustle and you know, he's going through and then the stick, and then and then you hear the whippoorwill. Mm -hmm. in um the lake now anyone who knows what a whippoorwill is who's been out in the woods and stuff like that that is not a scary bird whatsoever no. i mean that just always makes me think like at least for me like beautiful memories being mm -hmm. with my family or at camp you know hearing the whippoorwill and all that stuff but now you've got the whippoorwill in so many of these scenes and i'm like oh man i don't want the whippoorwill to be like a, like a sound of menace for me sure. i mean and it's not but it's like it's i love that they included that in here mm -hmm. and i saw this i think i said that i saw the chicago yeah. Film festival as far as like you know the buzz about it and stuff the big buzz was that someone threw up in the theater do i think that actually happened i mean i was up front so there's i mean it's a big it seats like 720 people however okay. There's a few things going on in my life right now that uh, some of my senses are very keen. I feel <laughs> like you would have if smelled someone yeah. had upchucked. I definitely would have caught wind of that. Two, I think I would have heard it, even if it is in a. Did that actually happen? Mm, I. It's. I have doubts, but whatever. It got the buzz, like with. Um, I think Dread Central and Bloody Disgusting. I was like, oh, someone threw up, which I've said this in different things that, you know, the movie Raw, I think when it was playing at Toronto after dark, someone said that they fainted or something. And it's like, so, I mean, there's always that. I mean, who knows? Maybe there is a person that actually like, oh, my God, I threw up. Personally, I was laughing at the yoga kill. Um, I love the yoga. I was smiling too and clapping. I, I, I was, was like, yeah. oh. I was clapping. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> they are doing this. It's like, wow. I mean, it was, it was for me. I was like, I was like, what, you know, did the hook and everything. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, oh, wait, are they going to go through with the whole? And I'm like, oh, they are. I'm like, okay, bad props to you there. Yeah. I, I dug the kill, you know, and I dug the kills, whether or not they were simple or not. I thought they were handled well. Um, 
maybe a couple situations going up to the kill. Actually, in fact, the yoga kill specifically, um, it was the decision. And I'm all about letting go dumb decisions by people in slasher films. That's just a trope. You have to have that. Otherwise, a uh, slasher would never get to anybody. But and again, we're dropping spoilers left or right in the description. It says spoilers. So um, she runs up to the edge and she sees the sloping sand down to the lake and she stops. And I was just thinking of like, OK, you've got this scary guy with the hook and she just stands there and going, oh, I'm like. I'm having a hard time buying that one. I figured she would at least like roll down or sacri- you know, try to make it down the hill away from him. And then maybe he was going to throw the hook and drag her back up or something. But it was like that decision. And there were a couple other moments too in here where I was like, I'm all for dumb people horror decision, but there are just a couple of parts in here. And that was one of them where I was like, okay, that's pushing it for me, even me for dumb moves by people. So, and I actually had a discussion with some people about this. For me, that one, she sees him, is shocked because she mm-hmm. thinks it's this person who was just hitting on her. Right, she's like right. doing yoga. She's all calm, all this up. Yeah. Sees him, runs to the edge. And I don't think she realized how big of a drop that was. I think she just like, okay, this is the, you know, I'm mm-hmm. don't drink my um kombucha and stuff like that <laughs> and this uh mm. you know i'm not drinking that nasty beer uh i'm like this is a very look at this beautiful sunrise you know yeah. this is just like so zen and stuff i don't think she actually went up to the edge before mm. she put her blanket down to see how much of a drop that is and mm. when you see it it's like yes believe me i rewatched it before we got on here and i thought okay you know just it's like but that's like straight down. It's not like it like goes yeah. down like this. It's more like this. <laughs> it is. And it's one of those things she's that she, it's like, you know, you're trying to come up. It's like, okay, do I go down this? And then she turns around and then he's there. And it's like, and there went my decision making. Okay. Well, you kind of put that, you know, you kind of helped me with that. Obviously, I, I'm just going to die. I know there was, I've talked to somebody about this, like, why did she run away? It's like she did try to want to run away. She ran to the edge of the cliff and it's like, okay, do I jump off? And it's like 200 feet down or, uh, I don't know. And then, and you know what? There's a gut in my stomach. There's a big hook. Yeah, in my hook like, well, okay. I guess I, I did. I it, didn't really get to decide on that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just one of those for me though, where even though there, there was some sand and, and I've seen slopes like that before when, you know, with the washout and that, and I guess I was, it just threw me a little bit like, okay, do I get possibly murdered by this guy or do I, uh, you know, and there is one pause in there too. And I understand what they're going for, but I guess for me, I would have liked to see a little bit. I understand shock and everything, what you said, I fully get it. Just for me personally, I was like the, it was the one thing where I was like, Eh, you know, really, and you know, and there was a couple other like they're they're above uh, normal slasher dumb decisions to where it's just like eh, okay, um, you know, and even those didn't bug me as much, but the near the end of the film, they do a thing where I understand completely what they were trying to go for. At the same time, it ended up stretching out the film just a little bit longer than I felt it needed to be. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the Bobby story? I'm talking about, yeah, well, not the Bobby. The, after, because she she ends up coming across it, it. Again, spoiler, folks. She ends up coming across where it's her and her boyfriend, and they come up with this whole wonderful f- convoluted scheme to get him back up to the to the cabin and then he comes around the tree and goes hey when he's in striking distance i'm like dude dude really really this was your grand plan was sneak up behind him and just come within axe distance to get i'm like at least be you know a little bit farther away to make johnny work for it 
So that's the decision that I was just like, come on, you, you could have done that a little bit better. I did like her decision to where she looked at it and she was like, yeah, okay, I'm done. Put the necklace down and walked off, right, and, and ran off. But it's after that point you get this stretch of 10 minutes to where she gets picked up and she's talking to this lady in the truck and they're playing at, and I get it. They're trying to play at, Oh, it did. He possibly get in the back of the truck. Is he going to kill the old lady at some point and pop up like they normally do, but he doesn't. And then we get the shot of the necklace, you know, with the, with on the gas can. And I'm just like, for me, that whole little section took it down a notch for me a bit just because there wasn't really a payoff <laughs> so two things one just as a little correction chris and colt colt was chris's friend because remember okay. it's oh that's chris. right yeah okay yeah troy the dickhead is chris's boyfriend that's right i'm sorry yes. yeah her 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 ex or whatever her yeah, yeah. The, the the actual swoon guy because you had this dynamic of the three the 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 triangle of people to where there's the suave guy who has his history with the the final girl who has the dickhead boyfriend yes and and so you have that triangle and it's suave x i guess or whatever and final girl who is so not her boyfriend but her you know former Friend whatever whose yeah. mom just died or something yeah and, and yeah. her boyfriend even makes fun of that yeah. So here's my thing. This is why I love the part where Colt gets got. And yeah. gets, this is where I call that head smash. Yeah. Um, I love that part because it's one of those things when Johnny's like looking for them, you see Johnny and you kind of hear them whispering and all that yeah. stuff. So, you know, it's like in, in most slasher films, they have that. Okay. Here's the plan. This yeah. is what we're going to do. It's like, I'm going to, um, take his mm -hmm. attention and you've got the gas can yeah. and the um, bear trap and you it's like well I like do this you're gonna um, put him on fire mm -hmm. and like get the and yeah. it's like that's what we're gonna do so I love the fact that all of that all of that planning that went into that then mm -hmm. when Colt says hey you son of a and then smash and then smash 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 he goes to the ground. This is for and every, and this is spoiler. Yeah. And believe me, I actually, because this is where the sound design comes in and those earphones, I know exactly what you're talking about because I then counted how many times you hear Johnny smash Colt's head onto the ground. Yeah. At parts at number 40, that is when Chris who you see wearing the necklace that that's, you know, supposed to keep yeah. um, Johnny at bay in the ground. And she's got a gas can and she's got the bear trap. That's when she's slowly at 40. When Johnny is just, <laughs> just smash hamburger smash, meat. Now there's nothing left. Yeah. 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 I mean, at smash 40, that is when she slowly puts the gas can can down and the bear trap to make sure that he doesn't hear her. Then she takes off the necklace, mm -hmm. puts it on the gas can, and she's like, you know, I'm just I'm gonna I'm good. grab I'm this. I'm good. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna you you look like you're busy. So yeah. I'm I'm just gonna go this way. And then even when she's walking away, it's either supposed to be some PTSD or just in her head because she's so traumatized, you still hear mm -hmm. the smashing. Mm -hmm that Johnny is doing when I counted, it was at 88. So, I mean, that is how it's like, there's nothing left of Colt's head, it's, like nothing. But to me again, I loved that. Because oh no, I, I, I loved those bits. It was Johnny being right in front of in, in ax length. I wouldn't have mind if, if he was at least in arm's length and Johnny threw the ax and then did the same thing. Yeah. It was just that he was just that close. That's what threw me off the rest of the scene. Oh, I loved it. No, I'm with you. The planning and everything. And then her running that whole segment was brutal. The only thing was what sparked it was that he was so, he appeared so close. I'm like, I'm all for dumb decisions, but at least make him 
throw the axe, which we know he's proficient in, make him throw the axe and then start hamburger meeting the, the head. I, you know, so that was the only thing is that it, he showed up too close for me, even with this grand planning. But after that, I liked the Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I love that Colt was too close that it just like, you know, you, he doesn't even get through with it. Hey, you son of a son bitch. Of a bit, like, yeah. Hey, you son. It's like smack, 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 yeah. smack, 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 smack. And then down on the ground. Um, I did think that the whole, and I understand why they did this. Um, like when Chris, cause she's the final girl. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't even get hurt by Johnny necessarily. She gets injured by the woods. Yeah. She um, cuts her leg pretty badly on some random stick in the woods. And then when she finds a road, like somehow someone comes by and picks her up, which turns out to be uh, a character that was in Friday the 13th part two, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. Um, and then there's this whole monologue that that lady does about her brother and a wild bear and how sometimes animals just kill to kill. And it's like all this stuff, which I think is supposed to be some sort of relation to Johnny. But um, that went on so long. Um, and I don't know if you knew this, but uh, when I keep bringing this up, because I mean, I got some inside scoop, the Alex Jacobs who edited the movie, mm -hmm. um, he was actually at the music box when it played for the Chicago Critics Film Festival. And he said he was only supposed to work on the film for three months. And he ended up working on it for like 18, I think. They actually made one version of the film. Chris Nash didn't like it. So they made a completely different version of the film. Wow. And it ended up being this one. Anyone who knows indie filmmaking, you know, it's like, hey, I made a movie in 2007. It's now 2013. We haven't seen the movie yet, but I'm really hoping it's going to make it, everybody. <laughs> Um, stuff happens, you know, stuff, but I mean, and I have to give the guy credit. It's like that. He didn't just like, like say, fuck it. I don't either want to yeah. put out this. Thing that out. I don't like. Yeah. But he kept, he's like, no, this is my directorial debut. I think, yeah. His feature linked to, um, yeah. and it's like, I want to put the movie that I, you know, think looks best and stuff. So look, I give him credit for that. No matter if people hate it or not and stuff like that, that takes determination that takes, look, he had an eye. He knew it was wrong. Instead of just putting out something, it's like, no, I want to make sure that anyone who invested in this, like they get mm -hmm. um, the quality thing. I think it's, um, I like the aspect of the film. I liked the humor in it because there is some, I really wish, I think they missed out on the marketing for mm -hmm. like giving away little um, lockets that said oh, yeah. number one, number one motherfucker. Yeah. That's actually one of the first kills in the film, which, um, and it's like a guy who had number one motherfucker on a hat too. I'm yeah. like, you know, you guys are missing out on marketing things here. Like, I think, I think people would be wearing those if they had them. Cause I think that's hilarious, but, um, yeah, the kills are great. Uh, the performances were fine. I like that you had a death that is, um, I guess, I mean, we're spoiler. There's a drowning death that yeah. there's been drowning deaths like forever, but they did this in it's, it's still scary, but in a totally different way mm -hmm. than I feel like it has been shown before. And that to me, again, it's like, look, you're doing something new. I can respect that. Um, I know there are a lot of people saying it's like, well, it wasn't, you know, completely from the point of view of this. It's like, in the beginning, it's not because Johnny has not risen yet. In the end, it's not because, spoiler, once Chris put that necklace around the gas um, can and walked away, Johnny knew it's like that was like his security blanket. And he just went, he just wanted to go back to sleep. He didn't want to wake up. He just wanted to go back to sleep with his mama's necklace, you know, hanging him over him, hanging over him, you know, like a little, uh, yeah. uh, What's those things called that um, go around babies' cribs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A uh, uh, mobile. Yeah. It's like he just needed that, um, you know, mom's locket um, as a safety mobile for him to, like, go back to sleep and just, you know, all that. I mean, he, the way they describe how he died was shitty as hell. 
that's usually what makes zombified six foot five yeah. pillars <laughs> come to life. Yeah. So, you know, and you know, the repercussions that happen after that, I do not, I, um, the whole thing in the beginning, you know, when they describe, they have a whole, like his origin story of Johnny mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I get it. Johnny's pissed. Johnny was wrong. Johnny should take his revenge. And he did. But now he needs a Simba down now. And, you know, and they do that with the necklace. And I think there's um, there's some really funny lines around. Oh, yeah. The fire. Oh, yeah. There there's really yeah. are. Those are really funny. And just the stupid stuff when guys act like dicks. It's like, oh, yeah, when well, I'm going to throw these keys. It's like, why are you being such a dumbass? Like, seriously, who actually does that? Who? Yeah. No one. No one does that no. unless you're in a horror film or you're just an extreme asshole. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes I don't really care. You know, you, you have to thin, you have to thin the gene pool. You have to thin the herd. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, you know, he's an acceptable loss to the human race. That's what I have to say about um, the character of Troy. And a lot, most movies have those. They have oh, yeah. those acceptable losses. <laughs> yeah, there is acceptable losses. Uh, the headphone. The headphone guy, uh, I really enjoyed. I think that was Aaron. Uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed how they utilized his, what Johnny does with him. I really loved that sequence at the ranger station. And I just, I enjoyed that whole sequence. I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, like I said, it wasn't too much. I mean, I, I thought it was a very creative way and an interesting way to do a slasher film. It was... I was not bored with the walking parts, as people put it, because, again, I had the headphones on and the sound design. You really, if you're going to watch this, hopefully the theater has a proper mix, because that is really the star in here. Not only that, but just the crunching noises when the deaths are going on and that, you know, there's just a number of decisions, especially it was mostly the end. I think they could have trimmed that up still gotten across so it made that a bit shorter and still ended it like they did but they could have definitely cut maybe the the truck part the truck ride a little bit you know moved it a little bit more because it was like everything even when she's hurt okay and then it's just like all right, we're getting a lot of exposition dump in the truck, you know, which I got the point. They were talking about a bear balling, and then you're like, oh, was it actually a bear? Could have been Johnny who actually took out her brother and they're not admitting it or whatnot. You know, they're alluding to that. It just, I think that part could have been trimmed a bit. Still leave it in there if you want, but it just, it went on just a little too long for me. And, and I knew where they were going to end with it you know, by, by the time I realized he wasn't going to pop up anymore, I'm like, oh, okay, I, we're going to go. And then we get the shot with the gas can at the end. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so overall, though, I don't, it's not a bad film for a modern horror film. It's an interesting way to do it. Uh, and I might watch it again uh, down the road a bit. Uh, you know, I don't think it it's as awful as people are saying, though. There's a lot... You know, the, the color correction and everything on it's really good, uh, especially though, the as we mentioned before, camera work, sound, and the gore effects. It, it's like all the technical aspects of this film are fantastic for an indie film uh, of this nature. Uh, you know, the only other thing I wish they I wish they wouldn't have done is shown his face. I really wish yeah. Johnny, I really wish Johnny would have stayed out of focus the entire time. Even when he's looking at, you know, when when he when he's looking at the keys, I was I was sitting there, and in fact, I was saying to myself while I was watching it, I'm going, "Oh, don't show his face," because they had it blurred and they had the keys, and he was staring at the car on the keys, and I'm like, "Oh, this is great." It, stay like that. No, don't zoom in. Don't sharpen. No, ah oh, man, because he looked he looked creepy. Don't get me wrong. But I liked the idea of them leaving it an enigma of just how he looked. And by doing that scene, it, it took just a little bit of it away from me because I, I was digging up until that point. I was digging so much the mystery of what he looked like because you only ever saw him from the back or with the uh, old school fire mask on. Yes. In fact, that's what I was trying to do with this. It's yeah. Like, it's no, yeah we're... Fire mask. <laughs> Which I know um, 
I know some people who said it's like he looks like just a giant minion walking through the woods. I mean, to to that credit, even Stephen King said um, in a quote that it's like he it's like a giant minion that's going to devour you or something like that. I can't remember, but he did say he looked like um, a scary minion, and it's like, I mean, the way the helmet is, I it, it, they have a point, honestly. I, I cannot say that uh, it's like after I, it's once I heard that I'm like, see, now I can't unsee it. Now you can't see it. <laughs> now when Stephen well, King said it and stuff like that. But I mean, again, I've, I watch this in the theater. I watch this with headphones, honestly, hearing all the stuff with headphones, you really do mm-hmm. hear every single thing. Like, I mean, he kicks a bottle. I mean, the sound on that was crystal clear. And I mean, you've got idiots in the film. No offense. I, I could tell you a number of idiots that I've talked to regarding this film and also that I even saw today at work. So, I mean, <laughs> guess what, people? There are idiots in the world. So if they're in this film, <laughs> what? what? How could they do that? What? There's only smart yeah. people everywhere. No, mm-hmm. there's not. Because if you mm-hmm. had a bunch of Mensa kids in a horror film, that horror film would probably be like 10 minutes, maybe, if that. Well, I that's think like, be, yeah. Yeah, I think they'd be like, wait, we're going to, uh, it's like, there's what kind of thing going on? It's like, no, let's just stay here and just um, study. We're not going to do that. That just makes no sense whatsoever. And credits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or, you know, the ranger, after he, he plugs him, I, I get it because it was a horror thing, but I'm like, still, the way they set this guy up, he... He's hating Johnny. He plugs him. Johnny drops and he walks up to him with the shotgun on him. I'm like, shoot him in the head. Shoot him in the head. Shoot him in the head now. I'm like, shoot him in the head. Shoot him. I'm like yelling at the screen going, I understand this is a horror trope, but I'm like, you hate this guy. You know he can come back. Shoot him in the head with the shotgun. <laughs> well, or do the thing. I mean, he even know he even saw what was the catalyst, and it's like, right. then take that. You know, and I mean, his death. I, if there's <laughs> one thing that it's, and again, I feel it because this is the point of view from Johnny, and when it's point of view again back it's like we're seeing the back of his head so it's like his perspective on what's going on what he sees not necessarily like directly Mm -hmm. from his eyes but that ranger i feel like got the worst death whatsoever because spoiler johnny breaks his back and so he is paraplegic and then he's dragging him to where he then just like Puts him in like something that like I think cuts. It's a wood. log splitter. It's a log yeah, splitter. A log yeah, a log splitter, and then just cuts each of his limbs off, and well, I mean, only, it just keeps going. It does, I I think he only arm, cuts his arm. He only cuts his arm and his head off, which is well, okay. Which, which was a part. Well, not to cut you off, but that was one of the parts that threw me. That I wish they would have trimmed up, and yes. I was like, I was like, okay. This is going to sound twisted, and I'm probably going to have uh, law enforcement, uh, you know, calling me later. But I'm going to say, if you're going to take the time to do the log splitter and cut his one limb off, cut the other limbs off before the head, and at least justify doing the one limb. Otherwise, if he's just doing the effort of cutting the one limb, just cut his head off. You know, it, yeah. it was like an in between. It was like, okay, this is this kill is going on longer because it's a little more personal for Johnny. I get that. But then have him cut all the limbs off and then the head rather than just an arm and then go, oh, I'm going to do the head. You know, either do the head or do all the limbs and then the head. Don't try to do it in between because I'm just like, that didn't quite make as much sense because, okay, he's cutting off the arm first of paraplegic ranger. He wants to dole out the the damage. He wants to dole out the punishment then he would go for the other limbs before the head. The head I felt was too quick for the ranger. If he Johnny is what they're going with the scene is Johnny made it personal with that kill. And I'm fine with that. I'm like, do do all the limbs then. <laughs> you know? 
No, and I get that because, I mean, this is like Mandela effect for me. It's like I knew they did the arm and I knew at the end they did the head. And maybe it's just in my mind since I knew they did the one arm. It's like, so he's going to do the rest of them to just make them like arm because he's just going to dole out that pain. Yeah. Because it also could be like a part of like Terrifier, how he just kept doing right. the stuff to the girl. And it was just unrelenting. And I mean, not Terrifier 1, but Terrifier 2. It was right, like, right. oh my gosh, like, seriously, this is too much. And I felt like this was a little bit too long. But yeah, right. you're right. I thought, I, you know, now I think about it. Yeah, it was only one arm and then the head. And it's stuff like, it, which, yeah, it should have been. If you're going to do that, like, do all the limbs. It's like, he, if you're going to put him through pain, then do all the limbs. It, and and, and like pick, that. yeah, and you can pick a log splitter that moves quicker than that one. So, uh, you know, that's what I was like. And, and I'm not faulting it. it. It was a fine kill in that. But I'm just picturing it in my head how they could have maybe tweaked it. And if they made it a fast log cutter, that way they could do all the limbs and then the head. And then he's doled out the punishment. It was just it was just weird that they only do the arm and then the head. And I'm just like, OK, that one was just throwing a little bit. It felt. It sad, sounds sad, but out of character for this Johnny character, because up yeah. until now, we've seen him methodically, brutally, extensively kill people. And then in this one, he only does one limb while he's still alive. And then the head, I'm like, oh, come on, cut the other four off, <laughs> the other three off. <laughs> yes, here's, yes, conversations you'll only hear here. You know, why didn't he cut off the other limbs? Come on. <laughs> Like, what's wrong with you, director? It's like, I mean, if you had three other, um, like, areas, it's like, hey, what about his right arm? What about his legs? That was like yeah. waste of waste of appendages there that you could have yeah. just snipped off to really make this character suffer. Who is already like, he can't speak. He's like quadruple. It's like, yeah, just it's come on. I think that was a, I, that was a miss on you guys. <laughs> was, only you will hear that here. You'll it's, only hear that yeah. here. You'll, you'll only, only hear, hear that here. It's like, That's hey, when, when the horror fans are talking. Welcome to horror. Welcome yes. to horror 2024. <laughs> it's like not enough. Not enough appendages cut off. Mm. Not a, not enough appendages. Not look, enough appendages. So, look, oh, I say yeah. I think we both. I mean, I say see this in the theater, but mm -hmm. definitely make sure you see it with excellent excellent sound because you want to hear all those crunches you want to hear the whippoorwills you want to know that this is actually filmed outside and mm -hmm. taking that tear of the great outdoors and how beautiful nature is and how it just turns to bloody messes and all that stuff and, um, and there, there's a lack of a soundtrack as well so you just have the natural sound for the majority of this film outside of the on-screen music um and that adds to it especially when he goes for the water kill and he walks in the water and there's a long pause in the distance when there's nothing but the water and the wonderful nature and if you've been out in the woods you know all these sounds like you said katie um and yeah no i would recommend see it in the theater or if you're going to see it on streaming at home make sure you've got a decent sound system to listen yeah. to because that's a character in here and that really helps enhance it and while i may not have agreed with all their decisions in that i think it's fun to see people try to take a genre and still put a different spin on it yes I, you know and i think more modern younger demograph for horror will enjoy this film a bit more than those who grew up on the 80s slashers you know this is like if the burning was first person almost this is almost more like the burning as far as the pace of of kills in that uh you know and is it a is it a, a tr hot trash movie no i don't think it's a hot trash horror film i think it's something very different that will have the horror verse and fans talking one side or the other for quite some time yeah. and you know it's going to be one of those that people will visit like Skinamarink, uh, which I still have people who are saying, oh, I finally went out and saw it. And some people are saying, wow, I was bored at a kid sitting in a hall for 90 minutes or whatever. And other people are like, oh my God, I was so scared with the sounds and that. And I heard and reminded me when I was by myself as a kid by myself, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, it, different strokes for different folks. And there are far worse horror films out there 
than uh, this film. While that might not be much of a defense, I'll just say if you're looking for something different in the horror genre, in a violent nature is one of those. So there you have it, folks. I agree. Uh, and, you know, my birthday's coming up. So if anyone wants to buy me a locket that says number one motherfucker, <laughs> one motherfucker. I would very much appreciate that. Again, I really think the marketing team missed out on, they on, did. on a hat. And on a locket, because once you see yeah. it, you'll know. And it's very, very funny. <laughs> it is. It, it is hilarious as well. So, yeah. So, thank you, Katie, so much. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, bit of spoilery discussion about In a Violent Nature and maybe have you seek it out and, and form your own opinion. Uh, as we are, are amongst our friends with our critics as well, is you like what you like, as Mr. Don Shanahan would say at the end of the day. And, you know, we all share a passion for films and especially as horror fans, we love our horror, good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> so, Sometimes love <laughs> ocean and people get very angry with it. Uh, but well, yeah, we're, we're all passionate. We're all very passionate. It's but. all passionate. I and yeah, like I said, go. I think you should go see it. So yeah. there you have it, folks. And Katie. Uh, your license to shill is here. Where can people find your stuff at? You can find me on the blonde in front on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm trying to put stuff on TikTok, and Tiki Taki is just not letting me put up my videos that I try and do. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a Gen Xer and it just hates me. Uh, <laughs> but I'm trying. But yeah. Any uh, guesting uh, that I've done on podcasts or blogcast or blogs, um, you can um, find those on, uh, as I said, my Facebook and my Instagram and YouTube. I usually have it on at least one of those, and it's the blonde, B-L-O-N-D-E, in front. And I will have links for that in the body description of uh, the video. Uh, you know, those descriptions that nobody looks at anymore. But I'll have it there anyway in case you want to click on it and get to Katie's other wonderful stuff. So thank you, folks. Uh, and, yeah, remember, until next time, uh, just uh, keep that ticket stub.